Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Greetings. Thank you for coming. My name is Robert McCaw. I am the Government Affairs Director with the Council on American Islamic Relations, the nation's largest Muslim civil rights and advocacy organization. Today's press conference features a number of national American Muslim, Arab American, Jewish American, Iranian American civil rights groups, and we will be responding to the U.S. House Republican Caucus's scheduled vote to remove Democratic Minnesota Congresswoman Ilhan Omar from her position on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Yesterday, House Republicans advanced the resolution against Rep. Omar in a party line vote, 218 to 209, sending their measure to the floor to be debated uh, and for a final vote. Under the direction of House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, Republicans are expected to debate and hold this vote on this resolution possibly within the next hour. Congresswoman Omar is best known for several firsts. Rep. Omar is the first Somali American and the first naturalized citizen of African birth to serve in the U.S. Congress and the first uh, woman of color uh, to wear a hijab on the House floor after successfully advocating uh, for a challenge to House rules that denied her religious freedom in wearing a head covering. She has also been the frequent target of anti-Muslim driven political attacks, insults, mischaracterizations, double standards and threats which has led up to this very moment. Today we are joined by representatives from the Arab American Anti-Discrimination Committee, Council on American Islamic Relations, Engage Action, the Muslim Public Affairs Council, NIAC Action, Polygon Education Fund, JVP Action, and Tunisian United Network and Libyan American Alliance. After hearing from our speakers, there will be a time for questions and one-off interviews. Now, starting with our first speaker is Jasmine Hawamade, the Manager of Communications at the Arab American Anti-Discrimination Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Hi folks, my name is Jasmine Hawamde. I'm with the ADC. Today, we stand in solidarity with Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, who is facing an unjust proposal to be removed from her position on the House Committee on Foreign Affairs. This sends a clear message, an, an unacceptable message to Americans that elected officials may be punished for their views rather than their merits and consistency with our country's values. Congresswoman Omar has consistently defended international laws and advocated for human rights. Her voice should remain strong at this important moment in history. She serves as a powerful example to people all around the world who seek justice and equality. Representative Omar is constantly breaking barriers and is unfairly targeted as the first Somali American, African immigrant and woman of color to be elected to Congress from Minnesota. She has earned an equal platform so that we can continue hearing her voice on matters of international importance, such as human rights, human rights protections around the globe. Fortunately, House Democrats voted last week by unanimous con consent to keep Representative Omar on the committee. We applaud them for recognizing Congresswoman Omar's essential contributions to our society and urge others to show their support in the face of this unjust proposal. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Edward Mitchell, the Deputy Executive Director at the Council on American Islamic Relations. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum. Four years ago, America made history by sending two Muslim women to Congress. One of those women was Ilhan Omar. As you've heard, she was uh, a representative of many firsts. First Muslim woman, first Somali, first to wear a hijab. That made her a target from the moment she arrived in Congress and even before that. And more than that, she was a target because she is outspoken. She has vocally stood up for human rights around the world. She has called out war criminals from her seat on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. She has called out the hypocrisies of American foreign policy. And yes, she has spoken up for freedom for all people, including the Palestinian people. Make no mistake, that is why Congress is targeting her today. Because she is an outspoken Muslim woman who stands up for what is right and what is wrong on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. 
This is not about anti-Semitism. If Speaker Kevin McCarthy cared about anti-Semitism, he would condemn Donald Trump, he would kick Marjorie Taylor Greene and Paul Gosar off their committees, and he would apologize for tolerating their nonsense for so many years. But he's not going to do that. He is targeting Ilhan Omar based on the false pretense of bad faith attacks on her. We strongly condemn Speaker McCarthy for doing this. It is an attack not only on Ilhan Omar, but on the entire Muslim community and our right to participate in the political process. It is important to note that no matter what happens in this vote today, it will not change the fact that Muslim Americans are politically engaged, civically engaged, getting elected office in record numbers, and we are intent on speaking up for justice here and abroad, including for the Palestinian people. You can try to kick Ilhan Omar out of the debate if you want, but she's still going to be part of it. Trying to silence her is an act of bigoted, Islamophobic, hypocritical cowardice, and it will not stand in the long term, God willing. We support her. We support her seat on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. And again, the Muslim community is not going anywhere, God willing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next spe speaker is Iman Awad, the uh, Deputy Director at Engage Action. Thank you, Robert. My name is Iman Awad, the Deputy Director at Engage Action. As the first black Muslim refugee woman elected to Congress, Representative Ilhan Omar has tirelessly fought for her community and the people of Minnesota. When Republicans elected, after 15 votes, Representative McCarthy is to serve as a speaker, he vowed to remove Ilhan Omar from her Foreign Affairs Committee. In a statement last month, our CEO stated, Kevin McCarthy's move to remove Representative Omar from her Foreign Affairs Committee is a partisan move, an unproductive way to run the House, and is rooted in bigotry and Islamophobia. Representative Omar has experience in foreign affairs and deserves to be on the committee. Speaker McCarthy's effort to remove Representative Omar is an act of political revenge against House Democrats from removing Republican representatives from their House committee assignments last year, never mind that those individuals had threatened violence against other members of Congress. And as, African, as an African Muslim refugee, Representative Omar has often been the center of attacks from the GOP, including an incident where members labeled her, along with her fellow Muslim colleagues, as the Jihad Squad. As a woman of color and one of the first Muslim women in Congress, she would be an asset to serve on the Foreign Affairs Committee and in sub-panel sub overseeing Africa. We need diverse voices when crafting impactful foreign policies, and we should not cancel those voices simply because we disagree with them. There's a big difference between stripping members of Congress for condoning violence and for expressing their political views. Any attempts to remove Representative Omar from her committee assignment is simply an act of political revenge, and we urge Congress to reject this move. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Muhammad Ali, the Director of Policy and Government Relations at the Muslim Public Affairs Council. Good afternoon, everybody. The First Amendment uh, protects free speech, which in turn allows individuals diff with different opinions to engage with one another. This is the principle which allows and creates the bedrock of our democracy. On the other hand, Silencing dissenting opinions and thought is a principle most associated with authoritarian governments. Today, and starting with yesterday, Speaker McCarthy is advancing his long-standing desire to silence Representative Omar by removing her from the House Foreign Affairs Committee. This begs the question, is his long-standing desire in line with our democratic values or in line with um, authoritarian uh, censorship? We need Representative Omar's experience as a uh, refugee, we need her experience uh, as a former, as a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, to guide how we uh, conduct our foreign policy in these ever uh, ever changing times. We implore uh, Senator, we, we implore the Speaker to stop his efforts, and uh, we are we stand in lockstep with those um, in support of uh, Representative in Il Inhal, um, Ilan Omar. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is going to be Donna Farvard, the National Organizing Director at NIAC Action. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Donna Farvard. I am the Organizing Director for NIAC Action. It is outrageous that we have to gather here today to defend a legislator who has been courageously speaking truth to power. 
And yet, regret regrettably, a McCarthyite witch hunt is one of the first steps of Speaker McCarthy's GOP House. Representative Omar has been an invaluable voice on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, in large part because her lived experience is different from every other member of Congress. She was born outside of this country, has experienced the human impacts of war, and the profound uh, life-changing benefits of having refugee status here in the United States. The people who want to silence Ilhan Omar have not experienced what it's like to flee a war-torn country or live in a refugee camp, but Ilhan Omar has. Many Iranian Americans have experienced the horrors of war, living through a revolution and the brutal Iran-Iraq war prior to coming to the United States. That's why we are thankful to have an ally like Representative Omar on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Representative Omar knows that foreign policy is not just a political game. It has real consequences for real people. When the United States supports a dictator or sanctions that harm ordinary people, that has real world effects. And she has been consistent in standing up for justice and against militarism at every turn. We need more legislators like Ilhan Omar and far fewer election deniers who are far too comfortable with the Muslim and African ban and American fascism. So we say with our colleagues here today, we stand with Ilhan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next speaking is Emily Kaplan, the senior legislative and electoral grassroots organizer with Jewish Voice for Peace Action. Hello everyone, my name is Emily Kaplan. I'm the Senior Legislative and Electoral Grassroots Organizer from Jewish Voice for Peace Action. We are a multiracial, intergenerational movement of Jews and allies working towards justice and equality for Palestinians and Israelis by transforming U.S. policy. Jewish Voice for Peace Action is proud to stand in support of Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. Since being elected to office, Congresswoman Omar has worked to protect all of our communities here at home and abroad. All those who believe in human rights, equality, and justice should be fighting for her to keep her seat on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Let's be clear about why these attacks are actually underway. Speaker McCarthy and the GOP are waging a disgusting smear campaign against the Congresswoman in an attempt to stop her progressive work in Congress. Representative Omar is a progressive, she is effective, and she is a black Muslim woman who dares to challenge the hawkish U.S. foreign policy. Her values are universal, popular, and include fighting for Palestinians. So Republicans in Congress are doing everything in their power to silence her. As a Jewish organization proudly working for Palestinian rights, we can see the horrifying danger of Speaker McCarthy and the GOP's cynical attempts to falsely smear Representative Omar. The Republican Party is riddled with white nationalists and anti-Semites, and its party leaders have become increasingly vocal and bold in their hate and racism. Representative Omar, on the other hand, has worked tirelessly in solidarity across communities to create a just foreign policy. Across the world, authoritarian leaders are on the rise, and in Israel, the most extremist, supremacist government in its history was just elected. This year is now projected to be the deadliest year for Palestinians in decades. We need principled leaders like Congresswoman Omar and her progressive colleagues to advance a human rights-centered foreign policy now more than ever. We are proud to stand with Congresswoman Omar. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. And our last speaker is Monji Thawadi. He is the president of the Tunisian United Network and also the executive director of the Libyan American Alliance. Thank you, Robert. Um, I am proud today to stand with my sisters and brothers uh, to call on the Republican caucus to uh, keep Ilhan Omar on the Foreign Relations Committee for very two simple reasons. One for me is a personal one. I'm a father of uh, hijabi girls and they do see Ilhan Omar as a leader, as an inspiration for them. And uh, to be on the Foreign Relations Committee offering her thoughtful, her, her perspective, advancing legislation that makes a difference on the ground is, is, is extremely important for them. Uh, the second reason is a professional reason. I work on Libya and Tunisia and I work closely with her office and with other offices of representatives on the Foreign Relations Committee. And we found that Ilhan Omar presents herself as a thoughtful leader, 
somebody who is principled in her advocacy for many in our regions. She speaks on the issue of human trafficking. She speaks on issues of refugees and migrants. She speaks on issues related to democracy and human rights in the region. She speaks on those issues based on her knowledge, her principles. She speaks truth to power. She advanced legislation to protect refugees and migrants in Libya, for example, on the Libyan uh, Stabilization Act. If it wasn't for her reaching across the aisle presenting amendments that protect these voiceless people. Uh, Ilhan Omar needs to be on the Foreign Relations Committee and we need her work and we need her stand on that committee. So I hope that the Republican Caucus listens to the reason and listens and see Ilhan Omar as an asset for the United States and not just a, a, an issue with ideology or religion. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I would just like to personally add, I believe that Ilhan Omar is going to be in Congress for a very long time. She is going to outlast many of those who would vote against her today. I, she is unseated from the Foreign Affairs Committee. I am looking forward to her return to it and her subcommittee chairmanship one day. All right, well with that, we're going to end today's press conference. Thank you so much for watching and attending. Uh, and inshallah, we'll keep you up to date. Thank you.